Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain uh, the solutions to 2H to 2J of AA1 assessment 1 on MT3. And this is just for the type 1. Okay, so again, I have explained the solutions to the other problems in the other videos that I have made. So this video will just be on 2H to 2J. Okay, if you look at your paper, the 2H is we need to factor Z squared minus Z minus 20. Okay, so as, as the usual procedure or approach to factoring, we check if it follows uh, the form we're in, we can factor a common factor. Okay, but the first terms, the first term and the second term has a z, but 20 doesn't have a z. So z is not a common factor. For the numbers, you have only one for z squared and z, that's one as well, and 20. So there, there are no common factors for the numbers. Okay, so is it a difference of two squares? Okay, so the difference of two squares, we have three terms, so this is not a difference of two squares. Is it a perfect square trinomial? The first term is a square, so, so it seems like it is, but if you look at the last term, 20 is not a perfect square, so it doesn't follow the perfect square trinomial form. So well, how do we approach this kind of trinomials, okay? So z squared minus z minus 20 if they are not perfect square trinomials. Okay, this is much of a trial and error, like, uh, but we know that, that a trinomial of this form will result to two binomial factors. Okay, so we just need to check uh, the right combinations for, for the factors, for the numbers in the factors. So first, in, in the binomial factors, the first terms will come from z squared. So z squared is z times z. Okay, and then for the second terms of the binomial, we have two of the binomials, we have to refer to 20. So the, the numbers that you have to put here should be the factors of 20. And there are several combinations that will give us 20. Or to be exact, we need a negative 20. Okay, so for a negative 20, you can have negative 1 times 20, 1 times negative 20, 2 times negative 10, negative 2 times 10. You could also have uh, 4 times 5 or negative 4 times 5. So the several values to choose from. Okay, now, so how do we eliminate the other options? Okay, that's the rule of the middle term. Now, the middle term is the result of adding the outer and the inner product of the binomials. Okay, so if you remember the FOIL method, when you expand expressions, like a plus b times a plus b or a minus b times a minus b. You, you, if you follow the FOIL, then that means you multiply a and a, you multiply a and b, and then you multiply the a and b in the middle. So that's uh, outer plus the inner. So if the combination, if you, if, or if the sum of the two the outer and the inner will result to a negative z, then that should 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 be the right combination for the factors of 20. So to get a negative 1, okay, when you add two numbers and it will result to negative 1, the number should, should have a difference of 1, of course. Now take a look at 1 and 20. The difference is 19. And then same, of course, same with 1 and 20, negative 20. 2 and negative 10, that's a difference of 8, so it's not a 1. This is also a difference 8. So we only pick, oh sorry, this should be negative 5. So we, we, are, we have either 4 times negative 5, 
or negative 4 times 5. So how do we pick the right values for this uh, 2? So if we say that we already have uh, z and z, okay, and we somehow know that it's 4 and 5. So note we are trying to create z squared minus z plus uh, minus 20, minus 20. Okay, so to create a negative 1, 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1, and negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So the right combination should be a 4 and a negative 5. So this should be minus 5 and this is plus 5. Okay, so is it correct that this is the factored form? So to check, we have z plus 4 and z minus 5. Try to expand. So z times z is z squared. z times negative 5 is negative 5z. 4 times z is 4z. And then 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So negative 5 and 4z will become negative z. So z squared minus z minus 20 is the same as the given expression. So this is the correct factored form of z squared minus z minus 20. Okay, now let's take a look at a different one. Okay, but might be following the same format. Okay, in 2i, in 2i we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, do we have to factor this using the highest common factor? Um, I don't think that can be because the last term has no x. Is it a difference of two squares? It's a trinomial, so it's not a difference of two squares. Is it a PST? So the first term is a perfect square, but 6 is not a perfect square, so it's not PST or perfect square trinomials. So we can just have this like, a, like we do it by trial and error. Okay, so we look at the combinations that will give us x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, if I have x squared five plus 5x plus 6, a trinomial, this will result in two, two binomial factors, where the first terms will come from x squared and the last terms will come from 6. So let's start with x squared. x squared is just x times x. Now for 6, that will give us um, that's positive 5. We have factors of 6. So numbers that will give us 6 is 1 times 6. It could be 2 times 3. And I think that's it. Okay? We don't... Cons uh, negative. It can be negative. Negative 1 times negative 6. And then negative 2 times negative 3. Because negative times negative is positive. Okay, so how do we know the correct combination? Remember that we check by adding them. Now if you add them, what you should get should be a 5 coming from the middle term 5x. So 1 plus, uh, from 1 times 6, the sum is 7. So this is not the combination that we're looking for. 2 times 3, uh, the sum is 5. Negative 1 and negative 6, the sum is negative 7. Okay, note th these are the, when you multiply them, they are 6, okay? But to check, okay, because you might be thinking why is uh, 1 and negative 1 and negative 6, negative 7. So we are now adding the two factors, so negative 1 and negative 6. The negative 2 and negative 3 is negative 5. So the right number, the right combination rather, should be the one that is giving us a positive 5. And that is 2 and 3, the positive 2 and positive 3. So to complete the factored form of x squared plus 5x plus 6, so we place the one of the factors, that's 2, and the other factor is 3. So they're both positive, so it's x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, so that's how you factor expression that are not perfect square trinomials, but something that you have to do by trial and error. Okay, let's go to letter J. In letter J, we have 
3 n squared plus 10 n plus 7. So we check is it about the highest common factor? I don't, I don't think so because 7 has no n. And then number 2 is it a uh, difference of two squares? It's a trinomial, so it can't be a difference of two squares. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Because it's a trinomial. Uh, 3 is not a perfect square, so it, it cannot be factored through the perfect square trinomial uh, uh, factoring. Okay. So again, we do trial and error for the finding the right combinations. Now, 3n is 3n and n. Okay. Now, for 7, so we have to identify the factors of 7. 7 is 7 times 1 or 1 times 7, and there are no other uh, factors. Okay. So, we, we try if, if 1 and 7 will work. Okay, uh, by the way, you, you could try negative 7 times negative 1 as well. But as we look at the middle term, it's a positive 10. So the negative times the negative will not work for this. Okay, now, you have 7 times 1 as an option. So how do we check? Okay, um, so we, we check if the middle or the inner product and the outer product will result to a 10n. So 1 times n is n, 3n times 7n is 21n, and if you add them, it will give you 22n. So, so that means 7 and 1, 1, 1 as the number here, and 7 for the n will not work. But before you will say that 1 and 7 is not the proper combination, try to interchange the numbers first. Because maybe 7 must be here and 1 must be here. So this is 7n. So this is 7n. And here is 3n. And 7n plus 3n is actually 10n. So, so that means that the right combination for the factors should be 3n plus 7. It should be 3n plus 7 and n plus 1. So 3n squared plus 10n plus 7 is the same as 3n plus 7, and then n plus 1. Okay, by the way, just in case you're wondering how come in the previous example, the moment we found the factors of 6, we just added them, and then we have 7, 5, negative 7, and negative 5, and we pick whichever will give us a middle term. Now, in the, in the second one, in, in the next one, in 2j, if I add 7 and 1, it becomes 8. So, so why is it not a 10? So why is 7 and 1 correct when, when the sum of them is 8? Now, the difference of this problem to the previous one is that the coefficient of n squared is no longer 1. Okay, it, it, it has a 3. So that means you have to consider the 3 as well. That is why when we place the factors... We place the factors 3n and n, and we place 1 and 7, or 7 and 1. We needed to consider the outer product and the inner product of the expression. And whichever will give us a 10n, then that should be the right combination for the factors. So hence, we ended with 3n plus 7 and n plus 1. Okay, so that's for, for this video. So for the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve number three of type one.